Praise the Lord. Church, I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord reward your patience and faithfulness in Jesus' name. Sitting down, hearing all these wonderful messages, and yet be ready for another message that will inject your life, propel your life, prosper your life, for the final solution. You will not come in vain. Your perseverance will not be in vain. The word of God will do good in every life. In my life, the Lord will do good. And the revelation of the word will prosper your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for your word. Thank you because you are not tired speaking to us and we are not tired listening to you. We are asking, Lord, that your word will prosper in every life in Jesus' name. Amen that you will reveal deep, high, great, broad things to every life, even tonight in Jesus' name. And whatever problems might still be hanging around, the power of your word, the truth of your word, the reality of your word will sweep everything away in Jesus' name. Bless us together tonight. Children, youths, students, everyone, let your blessings overflow in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 7. Hebrews. Chapter 5, verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, was strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and he was hurt in that he feared. Verse 8, Though he was his son, the very son of God, yet learnt he obedience by the things which he suffered. Verse 9, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Tonight we're looking at the subject, the supplication, and the sacrifice of Jesus. The supplication, the cry, the demand, the asking, the prayer of Jesus Christ as well as the sacrifice, the price he paid for your salvation, for my salvation, the price he paid so that it can be the final perfect solution in your life. Look at that verse 7. In the days of his flesh, he offered up prayers. He's talking about the prayer in a garden of Gethsemane. Many people do not understand, especially in connection with this verse, that Christ our Savior, Christ our Lord, Christ our Master, offered up prayers and supplications, both 
in the plural. He went, he knelt down, he prayed. He came back again and went and he prayed. He came back again and he went and he prayed. He offered up, offered to the Father and prayed to the Heavenly Father. And he offered these supplications for strong crying and tears. In fact, the record tells us that the crying, the tears also went along with drops of blood that he sweated out. And then it says, he cried to the Father with great tears that is able to deliver him from death. Able to deliver him from death. What does that mean? I thought he died for us. Yes. I thought he bore all the pain, carried all our sin, and he actually died on the cross of Calvary. That's true. But you know, he was bleeding, bleeding blood, and the heart was broken. And because of that broken heart, he could just die there with all the blood coming out and the heart that was broken. And he was praying to the Father, Father, the load is much. The broken heart is terrible. And this can kill before I get to the cross. And the death that was to die was to be the death of the cross. By prophecy, they pierced my hands and they pierced my feet. And they will look on him whom they pierced. He was to die on the cross. But he prayed that the agony, the suffering, the bleeding, the heartache will not make him die there at Gethsemane. And the Bible says he was heard. The Lord sent an angel from heaven and strengthened him to prepare him for the real death on the cross. And though he was a son, the very son of God, yet he learned obedience to the heavenly father by the things which he suffered. You know, some people, they have not studied the life of Jesus. And they allow suffering to create disobedience, rebellion, truancy in their lives. Their suffering makes them defiant. Okay, if I'm suffering like that, I'm going to disobey because of the suffering. I'm going to rebel because of the suffering. They make me suffer like that, all right. My reaction, my response to the suffering is that I'll be unfaithful. But you know the example Christ is leaving us is that suffering led him to be obedient and to be faithful and to be trustworthy. It says in that passage, even though he was a son, yet he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. I will be like Christ. I can't hear you. I will be like Christ. Suffering should drive us to Calvary. Suffering should push us near heaven. Suffering should not make us get farther and farther away from heaven. But in the case of Christ, he made use of his suffering, made use of his trial in a positive way. And then in verse 9, and being made perfect 
by that suffering, he became the author, the originator, and the giver of salvation, eternal salvation, unto all them that obey him. See what he's leading to. He gives us salvation. He suffered for that. He gives us salvation. He endured for that. He gave us salvation by obeying the Father. And now he says, as we follow his model, follow his pattern, and follow his way, the salvation he gives us leads us to obedience. Your salvation will be real. Your salvation will not be make-believe. Your salvation will not be superficial. Real salvation. Genuine salvation. Transforming salvation. That regenerates and changes your life. Your life is changed already. Salvation for you. Genuine salvation for you. Transforming salvation for you. A kind of salvation that makes you to be so grateful to God, you're obedient to the Lord in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 24. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself he died for us was buried he rose again on the third day after that resurrection he appeared to his own disciples and after 40 days of infallible proof that he was truly risen from the dead. Now he went to heaven. And as he went to heaven, it says, he is there to appear in the presence of God for us. For me. I said, for me. He's gone to heaven. And is appearing there for us in verse 25. Now yet that he should offer himself often one sacrifice final, one statement it is finished final, as the high priest enters into the holy place every year with blood, the blood of others. But then must see often have entered since the foundation of the world must have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself two things. Number one, the supplication. Number two, the sacrifice. He made sacrifice for us. Before that sacrifice, he prayed. He made supplication. And then he made the sacrifice. And after the sacrifice, he's gone to heaven making intercession, supplication for us supplication sacrifice after that supplication again supplication here on earth sacrifice here on earth and then he went to heaven with his blood the blood of the covenant supplication again hebrews chapter 7 in hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever 
liveth to make intercession for them ever. It continues until this very time. The Lord is still making intercession for you. He's praying for you that your salvation will be real. He's praying for you that your salvation will be fruitful. He's praying for you that you will stand in temptation, in trial, in trouble. You will stand. He's praying for you. Hell, you will not go there. Is praying for you that that heaven, you will reach that heaven in Jesus' name. It's going to prepare a place for you. And it's praying for you that that preparation is making for you will not be in vain. You'll be there. As Joshua got to the land of Canaan, you will get there. As Caleb got to the land of Canaan, the promised land, you will get there. And as many people, saints of God, who are washed in the blood of the Lamb, by His prayer, by His grace, by His mercy, by His love, by His intercession, as they made it, that same prayer is praying for you. You will make it. I will make it. Not only on the basis of your strength, on his strength, on his prayer, on his goodness, on his love, and on his holding your hand, you'll get there in Jesus' name. The supplication and the sacrifice of Jesus. Three things we're looking at. Number one is supplication for sinners and saints. He prayed for everyone and he's still praying for everyone and for you in particular whatever your spiritual level low middle high higher you need his supplication is praying for you his supplication for sinners and saints number two is sacrifice our salvation and sanctification without that sacrifice without that suffering without voluntarily wholeheartedly going through what he went through there'll be no salvation for everyone but because he paid the price he paid the full price and now he offers to us what that sacrifice purchased on the cross of Calvary because of that salvation is available solution is available sanctification is available it will confirm it in your life point number three is spirit for sanctified sons and servants a spirit for sanctified sons and daughters and servants. It's good to even introduce the daughters there. Daughters, are you not happy? The Lord is thinking about you. He'll wipe all your tears away. And all those things you have been reaching forward to, and you say, when am I going to get them? You've got them already. A spirit for sanctified sons and servants. Point number one, the supplication, Christ's own supplication. His supplication for sinners and saints. Look at the prayer he prayed while he was still on the cross. While the sacrifice was fresh. While he was dying of agony. And while he was bleeding from all the nail prints in the hands, in the feet, and then on the side, look at the prayer he prayed in Luke chapter 23, reading from verse 34. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, 
forgive them but they know not what they do and they parted his raiment and cast lots he prayed for the sinners which sinners those who betrayed him and those who arrested him and those who took him and he said away was him we prefer Barabbas he said father forgive them they know not what they do and those who said Pilate crucify him and let his blood be on us we're ready will bear the consequence of our action his blood can be on us and punishment may come we're ready he said father forgive them they know not what they do and then the people that were at the cross and those who nailed him to the cross and he heard the cry when he felt the pain and he said whatever cry you have you can cry more than that you are being crucified father forgive them they know not what they do and the people that took his garment and they parted his garment and divided among them father forgive them they know not what they do and the people that said are you not the christ didn't you say you are the christ come down from the cross and they will believe you father forgive them they know not what they do as he prayed for the sinners at that time for all the sinners that will come all the sinners that will be born all the sinners that will exist and they work in equity the, the lord jesus has prayed for everyone saying father forgive them they know not what they do only that you have to repent only that you have to turn to him there were two thieves on the cross one on this side the other one on the other side and both of them were talking and one of them said if you are the christ deliver us now let's come down from the cross to pay our lives the other one said why are you talking like that don't you know we are suffering for our own sin but he has done nothing wrong and then that one said lord remember me when you come to your kingdom he remembered him he will remember you yeah. on the cross right there about to die he benefited from the prayer of christ from the supplication of christ father forgive them they know not what they do that man got to heaven as i think about it i wonder that thief on the cross he got to heaven even before peter before james before john you will get there the mercy of God, the love of God, the grace of God, that this man didn't even have chance to be baptized in water, didn't have chance to prove his salvation, didn't have chance to testify to his people because all his people they counted him as a criminal not worthy to live and when he received that forgiveness he couldn't come down from the cross and go and tell them hey see what the lord has done you think i'm so terrible and that i cannot be forgiven i am going to heaven all his riches didn't even know they had rejected him and abandoned him but he got to heaven i said but he got to heaven between you and jesus as you accept the prayer that he prayed for you heaven will be your lord look at luke chapter 22 luke chapter 22 I'm reading here from verse 31. 
And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. His foremost apostle, the number one disciple, the self confident disciple. And the one that bragged and boasted, if everybody denies you, count on me. I will not deny you. He's praying for the self-confident. He's praying for the people that are so sure of themselves, and yet Satan is after them. Satan will not meet up with you. He may run, he may drive like a chariot, and while you are going, at your steps, you'll be slow, you're almost tired, and you're weak, you're discouraged, but you're a disciple, you're a child of God, and Satan wants to take the advantage of your ignorance, and that as you're walking like that, running after you, they will not catch up with you. You know, this final solution you are getting, you are going to be stronger. You are going to be protected. Your life is going to be preserved. And every good spiritual thing you are dreaming of, that dream will come to reality. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. What does that mean? When Satan runs after anyone, pursues anyone, what he wants to do is to bring a seed. And then put you inside and pound you, pound you until the wheat is separated from the child. And because he comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, he wants to take the wheat, the precious thing of your life away and leave you with chaff and say, okay, you can go now. Satan has desired to have you and sift you as wheat, he will not succeed. You may even be ignorant, like Peter was ignorant. You may think there is no problem, there is no danger, as Peter was thinking, no problem, no danger. Even if you are ignorant, the knowledge of Christ will supply the need for your ignorance. Look at verse 32. And I have prayed for thee. Lord Jesus, in all your agony, in all your bleeding, and you're saying, not my will, but thine be done. You still remembered Simon Peter to pray for him. That's why he's Savior. And when we call him Savior, when we call him Savior, we call him by his name. If when he was weary and tired and suffering in agony and sweating blood, that he should be praying for himself alone. If when he was saying, my heart is full of sorrow, that he should be praying for himself alone, he still remembered Peter. Now that he sits on the right hand of the Father, no agony, no sorrow, no bleeding, no suffering, is praying for you. At the height of his suffering, he remembered Peter. Now at the height of his glory, he remembers you. Just stay with Christ. Just abide with Christ. He says, I have prayed for thee. 
He prayed for the sinners. He prayed for the backsliders. He's also praying for the saints, for the children of God. Look at John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 9. In John 17 verse 9, I pray for them. I pray for them. He always remembered them. I pray for them. He wasn't thinking about himself. I pray for them. He's praying for you. I pray not for the world. This one is special prayer. The general prayer. He prayed for the sinners, the world on the cross. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. But now, not for the world, but for them which thou has given me for thee are thine and all mine are thine and thine are mine and I'm glorified in them they'll be glorified in you and now I am no more in the world but these are in the world and I come to thee Holy Father this is the prayer keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are while i was with them in the world i kept them in thy name they will keep you as we go back home after we finish this final solution on the final day. And you're going back home on the road, he'll be with you. At home, he will be with you. And if there's anybody there, you're afraid of what you left at home. When I get back, what will I see? You will see good. You see the mercy of God. You see the provision of God. Christ has prayed for you. That prayer will be answered. Look at verse 13. And now come I to thee. These things speak I in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. That's the prayer he prayed. They wanted their lives to be full of joy. Your life will be full of joy. Joy of salvation. Joy of renewed strength. Joy of power of feeling. Joy of a consistent Christian life. Joy of victory in your life in Jesus' name. That's what he prayed for. It will be realized. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Peter would have wanted him to pray that as you are going, we too should go with you. Are you leaving us behind with the Pharisees, with the Sadducees? Are you leaving us behind with Caiaphas and the high priest? Are you leaving us behind with all the persecutors? Or are you praying that he will not take us out of the world? Because he knows that he is gone, his grace will be sufficient for you. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Look up here. He has kept me. He's keeping me. He's kept you. He'll keep on keeping you from all evil. Evil, devil, error, Satan, suffering, heartache. He will keep you. That's the prayer Jesus prayed. He prayed for sinners. 
He prayed for saints. He prayed for his own disciples. And he said, keep them from the evil. Look at verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. He's looked ahead and he knows we're going to believe and he says, I'm praying for all of them. He's praying for you. Look at Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, we're reading from verse 34. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 34. It says in verse 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God right now, who also maketh intercession for us? You didn't hear that one. He maketh intercession for who? He maketh intercession for who? You will not give up since you know Christ is making intercession for you. Praying for you. At the right hand of the Almighty God is praying for you. Will God the Father answer the prayer of Jesus for you John chapter 11 in John chapter 11 verse 41 then they took the stone from the place where the dead was laid look at this and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Always, always, when Jesus prays, the Father always answers. It will be an exception, an impossible exception. If the Father will not answer Jesus' prayer for you, that cannot happen. Verse 42, and I knew that thou hearest me, tell me, always, 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 the prayer of Jesus for you is answered already. Point number two, he sacrifice for our salvation and sanctification. He is sacrifice. The price he paid, the blood he shed, the suffering he went through just for you. If you were the only sinner in the world, Christ would still have come to pay that price and to make the sacrifice. And as you think about yourself, and you look at how you are, what your life is, what your past has been, what your present might be, and you're wondering, can I be saved? Can I be steady? Can I be steadfast? Can I be sanctified? This is what you need to remember. If you were the only sinner in the world, Christ will still have made the sacrifice for you. If you were the only weak person in the whole world, in the whole church, Christ will still have made that sacrifice for you to make you strong. If nobody else gets the benefit of Christ's sacrifice, you will get that benefit. First Corinthians chapter 5. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 7. Look at this. In verse 7, it says, Purge out therefore 
the old leaven that she may be a new lamb as she are unleavened for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us for even Christ Son of God Christ King of Kings Christ Lord of Lords Christ the Good Shepherd even Christ is sacrificed for us make it personal for even Christ for even Christ my Passover is sacrificed for me you are saved you are forgiven you are brought to the Lord and everything is sacrificed for chased and bought on the cross of Calvary. Everything is yours. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not of the old leaven, neither of the leaven of malice and wickedness, but of the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth is truth and truthfulness will saturate your life first corinthians chapter 15 reading from verse 3 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 for i delivered unto you first of all that which also i received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Remember, you in particular, he died for your sin. His death for you will not be in vain. His death for you will not be an unfulfilled sacrifice. He died for your sin according to the scriptures. Verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. It was for you he did it. It will be effective in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost. He is able also to save them to the uttermost. Look up here. Let's say you want to buy something. Maybe a car. Maybe a piece of land. And they told you the price. And you have paid almost everything. Maybe you paid everything. The whole price. But now, for you to get that thing that you have purchased, there is just a particular paper you need to process. And that paper will cost a little amount. Already you paid for everything. And how they say, there's one paper that needs to be signed and this is what you are going to pay and what you are going to pay now for that paper for the whole thing to become yours is not up to one over hundred one percent of what you have paid already will you say ah, I thought I paid everything already one percent even if it is only one dollar, I will not pay one dollar. You will take what you want to take. If you are not going to give a pay for everything, that one dollar, I will not pay. Anybody like that here? I can't hear you. No. You say, ah, that little amount, I paid everything already. Okay, take. And the Lord 
That's what he's telling us here. He has made the sacrifice at Calvary. The greatest sacrifice. The highest sacrifice. The greatest prize to purchase you. To forgive you. And to save you. And now all that remains. The little sin to make intercession for you. Is not on the cross anymore. Is now the right hand side of the Father. And is to pray for you so that you enter the kingdom. That little thing that remains, it will do it. And in your life, for you to get there, it is finished. Salvation, it is finished. Victory, it is finished. Sanctification, it is finished. Wherefore, he is able. Wherefore, he is able. Why is the scripture using the word able? Because Satan is contesting and is trying to hold you and to pull you back, saying, Where are you going? You will not go there. And Christ, who paid the price, is on the other hand holding your hand, saying, I prepared your place already. Come on with me. Satan or Jesus, who is going to win? In your life, the devil or Jesus, the deliverer, who is going to win? Jesus will win. On your life, Jesus will win. Your family, Jesus will win. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever live to make intercession for them. Supplication for those who are saved, those who are born again, those who belong to him, is able to save to the uttermost. Whatever the challenge, that river will not drown you. Whatever the challenge, that fire will not consume you. He is able to save you to the uttermost because you have come to God by him. Seeing he ever live to make intercession for you. Praise the Lord, you are saved. Praise the Lord, you are secured. Praise the Lord, you'll be steadfast in Jesus' name. Look at verse 26. For such a high priest became us, defeated us. Such an high priest defeated us. What does that mean? The children of Israel in the wilderness had a high priest. What's the name of the high priest in the wilderness? I said, what's the name of the high priest in the wilderness? Tell me now. Bible students, God bless you, Aaron. And then Moses went to the mountain top to receive the law from God for the children of Israel. Forty days only. Aaron, the high priest, could not keep the people, all of them backslid with Aaron. And God said, I will consume them. Look at verse 26. For such an high priest, our high priest is different. Aaron, that high priest, was a compromiser. And he couldn't keep the people steadfast. Couldn't keep them uh, stable. Our high priest is mighty and strong. Your high priest is mighty and strong. All power belongs to him. All authority belongs to him. You will not go astray. 
For such an high priest became us who is holy, not like Aaron, harmless, not like Aaron, undefiled, not like Aaron, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. It will keep you. Saved, yes. Sanctified, yes. Hebrews chapter 10. By sacrifice, was saved. By sacrifice, was sanctified. Look at chapter 10 of Hebrews. Verse 10. By the which will were sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. By the which will we are sanctified. Your sanctification is guaranteed. You know, there are people, they have heard about sanctification. And they want sanctification. And they pray for sanctification. And they pray, and they cry, and they sweat. And they say, sanctify me, sanctify me. They never think that Jesus Christ, the sanctifier, has sacrificed already for their sanctification. They leave that sacrifice. They forget that sacrifice. They forget the grace, overpowering grace of God and the deep, high grace of God on their own. They're crying and praying, sanctify me, sanctify me. It's like a man that somebody has gone to pay the dealers for a car. The whole price is paid. All he needs to do now is make the effort and go there and collect the car that has his name on. But he wants that car. He's seen the picture of that car. He's raking naira and cobble. He's raising pounds and pence. He's raising dollars and cents. And he's raking them together. He's not got even up the price. And he's sweating, sweating. And somebody says, what are you doing? I'm raking up all the money I can get to go and get that car. But it's paid for in your name. Sanctification is paid for. You didn't hear that one. Your sanctification is paid for. All you need to do now is to be so grateful to Christ the sanctifier. And consecrate your life and say, Christ, if you could do that for me, for my sanctification, now I come, it will sanctify you. Look at that verse 10, chapter 10, verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. Look at verse 14. For by one offering. See that? For by one offering. He has perfected forever them that are sanctified. No wasting of time. You will get it. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 12, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people. It's not the tears that sanctifies. It's not the shouting that sanctifies. It's not fasting that sanctifies. It's not personal human effort that sanctifies. It's not the struggling that sanctifies. It's not beating yourself, punishing yourself 
that sanctifies is not hunger strike, hunger, hunger strike that sanctifies. Wherefore, Jesus also, that He who is your sanctifier, I said who is your sanctifier. Wherefore, Jesus also, that He might sanctify the people with His own blood. With his own blood, with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. People might ridicule you, people might make jest of you, and they say, Holy. Holy, pure, pure, sanctification. That's the reproach. You will bear it. I said you will bear it. You will stand. He will give you everything Calvary has purchased in Jesus' name. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, all his people, all those who are forgiven, all those who are saved, all those who have turned to him for salvation, and they are saved. Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, with what? Tell me out loud, with what? With his own blood. He says he suffered. It's not that he is suffering or he is going to suffer. He's done that already. Calvary has paid for it all. He suffered without the gate. He says, now the rest is in our hand. Now the rest is in your hand. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him. Unto him is he, Jesus, that saves. Unto him, let's go unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. Look at verse 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. You'll be there. I will be there. Hebrews chapter 2. We're reading from verse 9. Christ is our sanctifier. And as we go to him and get to him, he will sanctify us. He will purify us. And after purifying us, he will preserve us by looking at Hebrews chapter 2 Hebrews chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 9 it says in verse 9 but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels that's talking about his incarnation in heaven from all eternity it was higher greater than the angels he was responsible for the creation of those angels but now to come and to pay for salvation to come and to pay for sanctification to come and to pay for our entry into heaven he had to be made lower than the angels but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Because if he came as God, he wouldn't die as God, eternal. But because he became man, create now becoming less lower than angels. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. Amen. 
that he by the grace of God that he by the grace of God should taste death for tell me tell me say it aloud he did that for you remember once again if you were the only sinner on earth Christ would still have come he would still have died for you if you were the only person here tonight in need of sanctification he will do it I said he will do it because he has tasted death for every man the stain for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto many sons unto it will bring you to that glory in your soul your spirit in your life in your experience glory in jesus name to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering then in verse 11 for both he that sanctifies is still doing it as new people get saved he sanctifies he sanctifies as new people come they consecrate themselves to the lord he sanctifies as new people come and they lay self on the cross he sanctifies he has paid the price for the salvation and everyone who comes now he saves he has paid the price for sanctification and everyone that comes now is sanctified look at verse 11 for both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified you know there are people that say in their books that they write they say we will keep on being sanctified 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 gradually sanctified slowly sanctified daily sanctified little by little moment by moment sanctified but the same you can never be fully totally sanctified they don't know the power the ability of jesus our sanctifier look at verse 11 for both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified period is able to do it i said he's able to do it an instantaneous experience a great experience practical done he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one he'll give us his heart his mind his nature and therefore we are one we're in agreement with him for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren he'll not be ashamed of you he'll not be ashamed of me he'll confess you before the heavenly father he'll confess you before the throne of god he'll confess you before the angels in heaven point number three the spirit for sanctified sons and servants that brings in everyone his spirit the holy spirit he said he was going to pray remember we're talking about his supplication and sacrifice the supplication and the sacrifice of Jesus we're coming to John John chapter 14 
And we're reading from verse 16. Supplication. Supplication. As well as sacrifice. To our salvation, yes. For sanctification, yes. And for the power of the Holy Ghost, he prayed for that too. His prayer for you will not be in vain. His sacrifice for you will not be in vain. John chapter 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Pray. He, the Lord, he, the Savior, he, the Sanctifier, said, You want the power of the Holy Ghost? Yes, I do. I will pray the Father. There are people, when it comes to praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, they say they don't have chance here to shout the way they ought to shout. They don't have chance there. There's no liberty here to run up and down so that I can have the Holy Ghost. They do not understand that Christ, our Savior, Christ, our Shepherd, Christ, our Sanctifier, has already prayed. It's now for you to surrender. Surrender your life fully in a deeper way and say, I want to make use of the power of the Holy Ghost to evangelize and to witness for you and to run errands for you and to do your will. That's what I'm asking. And if you have the right reason, and you have the right comportment, whether you are sitting down or standing up, whether you are praying quietly or praying aloud, the prayer of Jesus will bring the Holy Ghost power upon your life in Jesus' name. For 16 and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, the team may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Why do we need that? You see, in the world in which we live, there's the spirit that walks in the world. The spirit of error, the spirit of, of um, falsehood, and the spirit of lying, all kinds of spirits. And they want to infiltrate our lives. That's why it says, when light comes in, all the darkness will vanish away. There'll be no darkness in your heart anymore. No darkness in your life anymore. No darkness in your family anymore. The spirit of truth will drive out every other kind of spirit whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you you are not alone the spirit dwelleth with you and shall be in you it will be in you in Jesus name when you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling with you. You are sanctified. You have the Holy Spirit that comes closer dwelling with you. But now, you want to be baptized, immersed in the Holy Ghost, so that the Holy Spirit will not just be with you, but will be where? in you look up here it's like you are expecting a guest and this guest you are expecting you give uh, that guest time please come at 6 p.m. 
the guests wanted to beat the holder. Therefore, the guest came before that six o'clock and he rings the bell. And you tell your daughter to go and open the door. The daughter opens the door and then seats that guest in the living room. And somebody called you. So and so said, it's going to be with you. You see, they are ready. You say, yes, is with me, but not in the place where I'm going to receive him yet. And eventually, six o'clock, you prepare yourself. Dinner is ready. Everything is ready. And now you come, you receive him, and you bring him in into the inner chamber. The Holy Spirit has been there. It's the spirit that bears witness that we are the children of God. And it's the Holy Spirit that says, this is the will of God for you, even your sanctification. The Holy Spirit has been with you, but now it will be in you. Tonight, it will be in you. On the basis of the fact that Christ has made the supplication, and not only that, is made the sacrifice. The supplication and the sacrifice brings him in unto you. Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. You see, that is a sacrifice. Cause be everyone that hangeth on a tree. What for? For what reason? For what purpose? Verse 14. It says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive are you there? that we might receive somebody there tell me the promise of the spirit through faith he made supplication that you will have the power of the Spirit, the indwelling of the Spirit, the infilling of the Spirit, the baptism in the Spirit, the immersion in the Spirit. And it says, through that sacrifice that he made, and the supplication that he made, Holy Ghost power is yours already in Jesus' name. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Reading from verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient, it's profitable for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. And when he is come, is coming to you. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When he comes, his presence in your life will reprove the world of sin. And then it says of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The prince of this world is judged. Who is the prince of this world? I said who is the prince of this world? What? What's his name? 
You are afraid of him. You cannot mention his name. Satan. Look up here. Let's say there was somebody in the community. And he was a terror. At any time you are coming back from your office or from anywhere, you see him there standing and he's fierce. You are afraid. Fear grips you. You want to pass that way quickly. At any time, it's demanding anything. Give me this, give me this, give me this. You just surrender everything. Because he was Mr. Terrible. But now, you read in the papers that he had a case with the police and with the army. And now, it went to court and they judged him and sentenced him are you afraid again no. satan is judged yes. satan is sentenced yes. the arch enemy the great enemy is judged already you are not afraid of him anymore in jesus name yes. now you will enjoy your blessing you will enjoy your provision. Verse 12, I have many things to say unto you, but she cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you into all truth. The spirit of God, the spirit of truth, will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. He, the spirit of truth, the spirit of revelation, will show you things to come. In our lives, we generally fall into some pits and into some danger because of our ignorance. When the Spirit of God comes in, if you are to take this road, the Spirit of the Lord will alert you and show you things to come and say there is danger there, then you will shift and go to another place. He will protect you. His revelation will protect you. His truth will protect you. And He will show you everything you ought to know so that your life will be preserved in Jesus' name. John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, verse 26, for the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. No more ignorance, he will teach you all things. No more forgetfulness, he will teach you all things. And then he says, and he will bring how many things? And you will bring how many things? All things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. All the promises of God you have received here, when you get back home after the final solution retreat, you will remember. Whenever there is any challenge, the Holy Ghost in you will guide you into the truth of your victory in Jesus' name. You will not regret that you came. You will not regret that you didn't get what you were looking for. You will get. You have got. I have got. And it will not be taken away from you in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, 
I'm reading from verse 32, Acts chapter 5. We're looking at verse 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Look at that. So is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that do what? God has given to them that do what? That obey Him as you obey the Lord. He says, repent, you repent, and you believe on the Lord, salvation has come. As you obey the Lord, He says, lay everything on the altar, consecrate everything unto me, and believe as you do that, sanctification will come. You are not sure of that one. Yeah. And as you obey the Lord and your wage and your tarry, and you give yourself wholeheartedly without any reservation unto the Lord, and you pray with faith, obeying the Lord, the Holy Ghost will overpower you, will overshadow, will overshadow you will saturate you, will envelop you. All the blessings you are asking for, looking for, the Holy Ghost will descend upon you, will give unto you in Jesus' name. His supplication, he has prayed for you already. His sacrifice, he has made the offering already. And both the supplication and the sacrifice will provide all things in your life. I believe. I believe. Everything is mine. Rise up and tell the Lord. Rise up and tell the Lord. Everything is now available for you. Remember, it's been purchased. Remember, it's paid for. Remember, it's yours. Forgiveness. Peace of mind. Clarity of mind. Assurance of salvation. It's done. Because he made supplication. And because he made the sacrifice. And because he paid the full price. Tell him, tell him, don't be tired. You've endured since morning. Little bit more. Tell him, don't miss out. Salvation. If you were the only sinner in the world, you would still have died. You still have prayed for you. You still have made the final sacrifice. Salvation is yours. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Forgiveness, that's yours. Sonship, that's yours. Accept, believe, thank you. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Turn away from those things. Believe, accept. And then you can put it down. This day. My sins were forgiven. My sins were cleansed. My soul was saved. Sanctified. He made supplication for that.
He prayed for your sanctification. No more struggling. No more crying. No more beating the chair. Sanctify me, sanctify me. He's been waiting for you for a long time. He wants to do it. Holiness, not by tears. Holiness, not by inflicting any pain on yourself. Holiness, sanctification. He prayed for you. He made supplication for your sanctification. Accept, receive, believe. Is a specialist in cleansing. Is a specialist in washing. Is a specialist in purifying. It's done it for many other people. On the basis of his supplication, his prayer, and his sacrifice, the price he paid. If you want it. You desire it, you are passionate for it, you are in pursuit of it. Lord, I want it. Lord, I desire. You'll do it. He saves, he sanctifies, he pardons, he purifies, he converts, he cleanses. The supplication and the sacrifice of Jesus. He has power, the power of the Holy Ghost to come on your life. He made supplication for that too. And he made sacrifice for that too. It's not something you are looking for far-fetched. How do I have the power? The infilling of the Holy Ghost. He paid the price for you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He said, I will pray the Father. And he will give you another comforter. The spirit of truth. That he may abide with you forever. The prince of this world is judged already. Your great enemy of your soul, the great enemy of your progress and possession is judged already, is cleared out of the way. Come and receive. Come and be filled. Come and be saturated.
is listening to your prayer is watching over everything he purchased for you that will lose nothing it's yours everything he made supplication for it's yours everything he prayed for it's yours Everything is sacrificed for is yours. I receive. I believe. I'm restored. I'm renewed. This blessing is yours for the asking. This blessing is yours for the claiming. It is done in Jesus' name. You have received in Jesus' name. The Lord has answered your prayer in Jesus' name. You will see the manifestation. You will not be like you were in the past. And what he has done you will receive and you will preserve in Jesus' name. Have I got anything? Where are you? Have I got anything? You have got it. Raise up that and Father in Jesus' name. We well, thank you for the provision at Calvary. Thank you for the salvation available for everyone. Thank you for the sanctification available for everyone. Thank you for the power, the immersion, the enveloping of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for every provision of Calvary. Everything belongs to every child of God here. Confirm each and every life in Jesus' name. No more weakness, no more falling, no more fainting, and there's no more backsliding. Affirm and confirm your power in every life in Jesus' name. Let there be peace in every heart, purity in every heart, power in every heart. And Lord, we pray this time your power will not fail in any one of our lives. We'll go from strength to strength, from victory to victory, from one level to a higher level. We'll go deep and deeper in the Lord in Jesus' name. Make everyone steadfast. Make everyone firm and let your blessing be yes and amen in every life. It is done. The past is gone. The present is glorious. And the future of my brother there, my sister there, boy there, girl there, your future will be wonderful in Jesus' name. You will rise higher than all your enemies. And heaven, 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 heaven at last is going to prepare a place for you. You will be there. 
you will not stop your journey halfway. The strength and the power to pull through, the Lord will grant unto you. The Lord bless you on every side. The joy of the Lord continue to be your strength. In Jesus' name we pray.